Let's talk about how to pass the GlaxoSmithKline first round interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English here to help you get hired. We break down the recruitment and interview processes of world famous companies to help you pass their interview. Today we're going to be covering the pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline, also known as GSK, and how you can pass their first round interview. If you want more help to pass your GSK first round interview, then check out the link down in the description below for the Pass the Interview Pack which has the research note, which I'm gonna be reading from, which is 50 plus pages of most common questions, core values, helpful resources, sample answers for your GSK interview, as well as courses, worksheets, handouts, and even more sample answers to help you be best prepared as you can for your GSK interview. In our past the interview videos, we split them up into three parts. Part number one, we're gonna talk about GSK's recruitment process and what you can expect. Part number two, we're gonna talk about the most common questions. And part number three, we're gonna cover some other questions that came up. Today, we're going to be covering 10 questions. All our research comes from publicly available sources online from candidates who have been through this process in 2022. So let's start off with part one, what is GSK's recruitment process like? What can you expect and how long does it take? So candidates reported that the process lasted two months. Initially, they had to do an online application. After that, you have to do a series of online assessments, which mainly revolved around situational judgment test questions. After that, stage two is an interview, which is a face-to-face -face interview with competency and motivational questions, and there are about 10 questions. And then finally, stage three was an assessment center, which is a one-to-one -one strength based interview with a senior manager from the area that you apply to, as well as potentially a case study and a group discussion. Here are the seven most common questions we came across for GSK. These are questions that candidates were asked repeatedly, so we feel like it's reasonably likely that you'll be asked these questions in your interview. Question number one, why this role? For an in-depth explanation of how to answer this question and a free worksheet, make sure you click the thumbnail up above. So really importantly, whenever you're applying for a job, make sure you have the job description to hand, which is helpful in outlining two things. What are you going to be expected to do day to day? What are your general or key responsibilities? And also what are the skills that you're going to be required to have? Now these could be hard skills, technical skills, like being able to code or use a particular CRM, type of software, scientific process, or these could be soft skills like teamwork, leadership, interpersonal skills. Now here's a quick tip for you. If you find that the job description for the job that you're applying for at GSK is not particularly helpful, then you can use a job description for a different company. All you need to do is, is write in the name of the job, look for a job description, and if you're really struggling, I always use prospects.ac.uk, and I find that to be a really helpful resource. So when you're answering this question, you really wanna think about answering it in two parts. Part number one is, what would you be expected to do in the job? So this is really just being saying, well, as a finance analyst, I would be expected to do, and you would just list out the key responsibilities of the job. It doesn't have to be more difficult than that. Part number two is you're gonna outline three or four key skills that you would need for this job. And again, you can get this from the job description. Now importantly, when you're outlining the key skills, so say you need to demonstrate that you have really good Excel skills as a finance analyst. So you can say, well, actually I've got advanced Excel skills because I had to use uh, macros. I've actually learned how to do a little bit of coding in VBA because I had to use Excel through the three years during my degree. And I also took an advanced Excel course to learn about how to do macros. So we're providing proof. We're not just providing an opinion. Bearing in mind if you say that, well, I have all of these skills or these strengths, but you don't provide an experience, then it's just your opinion. So provide something that gives you some proof. And this is really just about regurgitating the job description because that's the cheat code for the job. The company's already outlined what exactly that it is that they are looking for, and then you just mirror that back to them in your answer. Question two, what are your strengths for this role? So you really want to zero in on any experience that you already have that they are looking for in their job description or any skills that they want in their job description that you can already demonstrate. And you just wanna outline, well, 
I'm actually really good at dealing with customers. I've worked at McDonald's for the past two years. Every day I have to deal with 50 customers. I'm really good at working under pressure. I've got great numerical skills. I'm good at resolving conflict because people are uh, in a rush and they really want to make sure that they get their order because they're hungry. You know, these types of things is where you're really just laying out, well, I know that these are the things, these are the strengths, the experiences, the characteristics that you are looking for. And I have those strengths, experiences and characteristics. And here's proof, because these are the things that I have done. Question number three, why this company? For an in-depth explanation of how to answer this question, as well as a free worksheet for you to download and fill in your own answer, make sure you click the link up above. So you're gonna get about two to three minutes to answer this question. So the first point that I'm gonna make is make sure that the facts that you give about why you want to work for this company are specific and not generic. Here's an example of one of the facts that we researched in the research note which you can find in our past the interview pack. In 2012, GSK developed 23 forward-looking commitments across the four areas of their responsible business approach. They aim to address global health needs and are aligned with their strategic priorities and value. So this is a specific fact that can only be said about GSK. And again, you could find this from their About Us page, from their Annual Reports page, from their History page. And when you're researching a company, this really should take you no longer than 15 minutes to do. And you wanna find five or six compelling facts. And if you really want to deliver what I consider to be an excellent answer, then tie in one or two of those facts of your personal experiences. So it could be a relative who has been sick and that you're really interested in a particular product or project that GSK is working on. It could be their charitable causes because this is something that is close to your heart. What this helps to do in your answer is not just make it sound like another list of facts, but it sounds like something where you personally resonate with the company and what they're doing. But most importantly, for your answer for this question, make sure those facts are specific to GSK and well-researched. Question number four, can you tell me when you failed to deliver a project on time and how did you handle it? Okay. So this is what is known as a negative competency question. Whenever we're answering any type of competency question, we want to use STAR, which is situation, task, action, result. Now, if you'd like an in-depth video about how to answer competency questions and STAR, drop us a comment down below. And if I get a few comments down there, then I'll make sure that I make one of those videos for you. So one thing you want to concentrate is situation was, where were you and what were you doing? task, what was the specific task that you had to do? Action, what were the actions that you carried out to get the result that you achieved? Now failing to meet a, a deadline or a project, now for those of you who are watching this and say, well I haven't got any work experience, just relate it to something to do with university, then you might say, well I've never missed a deadline. Okay, but what about a personal deadline, a personal goal that you set yourself, maybe a project that you were doing in your own spare time or something that you wanted to get sooner and you were unable to do that. Now really importantly, the crux of a good answer to this question are the lessons that you learned. So, you wanted to release a project, you failed maybe because you didn't manage your time, you didn't allocate your time correctly, you allowed external influences in, so that distracted you because you had a friend in distress or you had somebody who needed your help. And instead of just saying, look, I'm really sorry, I can't, I can't deal with that right now, you help them because you're a good person and then you found that you missed the deadline that you had. Cool, that's fine and that happens to everybody. So what did you learn? Then the second half of your answer is really all about saying, well, the next time when this happened, I did one, two, three improvements and fixes, and actually I got the result that I needed. So the result ends up being something positive because you're clearly demonstrating the lesson that you learned from the failure that you had. Question number five, describe a time you've overcome problem. So overcoming a problem, this again is another competency-based question using STAR. So most importantly, try to make sure that this is a multi-stage problem. So it could be, well, I had to do a dissertation, so I had to do my research, I had to write out my brief, I had to put together my uh, book list, I had to go through it with my assessor, I had to write my draft and so on and so forth. I would say the problem should have at least two or three stages to be fixed. 
So a one step problem is, well, I wanted a cup of tea in the morning and I ran out of milk, so I went to the shop. It's not really a difficult problem that I've had to overcome. And you can clearly demonstrate how you answer that. Generally, it's about good planning and preparation, seeking out additional help and resources, um, making sure that you organize your time effectively, having that deadline or goal in mind, and then working systematically through small chunks to reach that deadline or goal. Question number six, have you led or managed anyone? Now this is a great question. If you have done this, then really it's about demonstrating, you know, when you've led someone, what makes good leadership. I would like to give my kind of personal thoughts about this. For me, good leadership is really just about demonstrating leadership from the front. So if you want someone to work hard, you have to work hard. If you want someone to be organized, then you have to be organized. This is definitely a lesson that I've learned the hard way over 10 years that I've managed people and businesses, where sometimes I will get annoyed at somebody for being disorganized, and then I have to reflect and think, well, actually, I'm the one that's disorganized. Good leaders recognize that ultimately the buck has to stop with them. It may be that the buck stops with them because they've hired somebody who doesn't have the right set of skills. So actually that's a failing on their part and they need to find somebody else or they haven't communicated properly or they haven't really you know, explained what it is that somebody has to do or they've had a bit of a short temper and they've taken something out on a member of staff and really you're just having a personal problem or issue that you haven't resolved and you've kind of, what uh, a mentor of mine said, you've taken your personal worry bag into work. Now, if you haven't led or managed someone, you can just use a simple example of leading or managing yourself. Managing your time, managing your resources, getting your degree, getting to work, balancing the things that you have to do in your life. So it's a really good way of answering this question if you've never been put in a leadership or management position before. And of course, you might use an example where you've led or managed a team for a group project at university. Question number seven, how would you describe yourself or how would your friends describe you? Again, we want to make sure that we're using the job description. Very often people answer this question and go, oh, you know, well, I'm very happy-go-lucky and my friends would say that I'm really loyal and I'm a good listener. That's all fine. <laughs> that could very well be true, but it doesn't relate to the job description. The job description is that kind of codex that the company is saying, well, this is really what I'm looking for. So you could say, well, my friends would say that they would generally come to me for advice and I am the shoulder that they like to cry on when they're going through difficult times because I think I've really worked hard to develop great interpersonal skills, which I think will be very useful for the job that I'm going to do. So every point that I'm making in terms of how I would describe myself or how would my friends describe me is something I'm then linking to a point on the job description. So here are three other questions we came across which we thought were uh, uh, definitely good to highlight and bring to your attention. Question number one, describe a time you worked as a team. Now, teamwork questions come up for pretty much every big company that we sponsor. So when you're thinking, teamwork questions come up pretty much for every company that we research and put out videos and packs for. So when you're thinking about good teamwork, really think about, well, what is it that I would need to do in the action part, the 70% of the answer using STAR when we're addressing a competency-based question. So what would that be? Well, first of all, it would be, well, you know, I did my work. That's the bare minimum, right? And then I went above and beyond. I tried to help others. I made sure that I was punctual and prepared, that I turned up to meetings, that I would assist people where I could, that I kept us on track for meeting the deadline. Just because you're not leading a team doesn't mean you cannot be a leader. Because very often, you know, a good team member, say you finished your work early, you might turn around to your teammates and say, hey guys, actually, you know, I'm free. Does anybody have anything that they need help with that they would like me to do? Question number two, what can you bring to the role and why should we hire you? So of course, this is very similar to why this role and also why you. If you want an in-depth explanation to how to answer, you know, tell me about yourself or why you, make sure you click the thumbnail up above. But in talking about this again, we're bringing this back to the job description. We're basically saying, hey guys, these are the skills that I have. These are the experiences that I have. And funnily enough, 
they match what you're looking for in your job description. One thing I would say is don't be um, scared or don't be put off if you're not able to match everything within the job description. It's a very common thing when companies put out job descriptions, they'll basically list out a wish list of experiences and skills, kind of knowing that it's unlikely they're gonna find someone who can satisfy all of those things. But if you can satisfy a couple or half of those things, then fantastic. Question number three, describe a tough challenge you had to overcome. Very similar to question five and the most common questions of describe a time you've overcome a problem. And I'm gonna give you an example of this from our sample answers. Situation, back when I was the customer support team leader, we had a new client who was often very rude to my team. Task, I decided to meet with him in person to understand him better and hopefully create a more positive dynamic. My department only communicated to customers by phone and email, but I thought more was needed in this case. Action, I wanted to use the face-to-face -face meeting to really get to know our new client and also understand why he came across as so rude. From the moment I met him, he seemed very blunt and quite stressed. After 15 minutes, he began to share that he had a newborn baby who was sick and was spending all his time either at work or in the hospital taking care of his new baby and his wife. I realized that he was rude because he was just stressed and tired and feeling very low. All I did was listen and sympathize with his situation and explain that in the future, if he had any problems, he could call me directly because I understood his situation better and kept his confidence. Result, he ended up apologizing and after our meeting, he was considerably easier to service. So the difficult challenge here is just basically a, a difficult client. Um, and very often, you know, when resolving conflicts, I do tend to find if someone is difficult in their professional life, more often than not, you know, people are inherently good and they're just having some problems in their personal life which needs to be addressed. So a good way of thinking about that is really just outlining the steps that you took to overcome that challenge. It should be, you know, a multi-step challenge, two or three steps to really be compelling and believable. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video for GSK. Please be sure to uh, like the video, drop us a comment down below and let us know how we did. How could we make this video better? Was it helpful for your interview? Are there other videos that you'd like us to make? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck in getting a job. See you later.